my sister, don't wear it. It's but, me. It's my personal choice. But yes, and in a free society, the opinions of other people also have to matter. Not, it's of not course, just about you exercising of your course, choice. Yes, the way other fine. people feel about that should be of some concern to but you. But you know, these a feelings are coming from naked. negative prejudices. We, we have we coming from don't want men's opinions. No. No. You don't want men's opinions. <laughs> I'm sorry. We are okay, going to have to end it there. No, I'm really sorry. I the only man. I'm Everybody, sorry, you don't want to hear me. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be checking out a uh, debate, uh, which uh, Douglas Murray is one of the speaker. Uh, I think the title is uh, "Is Highly Undesirable." Douglas Murray schools Muslim activists wearing niqab in Britain. Wow, I believe this is going to be a very heated debate. So let's start with the video. Go. You are about to see Douglas Murray tell the truth as it is. Douglas Murray debates a panel of Muslim scholars on the influence of religion, particularly Islam, in the West today. Douglas Murray speaks what is on most people's mind today in the West, but what most are afraid to say. Douglas Murray did not hold back. Can I just begin with you, Fatima? Yes. 56% of British people don't really support the wearing of the full face veil in public. They don't want it. Uh, well, I think it depends on where you where you take the poll, really, because, um, well, uh, something that I've recently launched is a project called Secrets of a Muslim Woman, and it's all about letting people know uh, why we do what we do, because I think a lot of it is to do with not really being familiar with it. You know, I mean, I, I mean, my message to the British public is that you've got nothing to fear. You know, this but is they a piece don't of feel cloth. that, though, do they? Because <coughs> elsewhere in this po poll, a majority said they don't know how to relate you know, to a know, woman like, wearing a full face veil. I think, you know, the people who have actually interacted with women who wear the face veil, people who work with them... I mean, we're in East London today. In East London, the veil is practically, you know, normal on the streets of, of East London. Uh, people who've actually interacted and worked with women who wear the veil have absolutely no problem with it. Douglas I think Murray, it's a fear of the unknown. Douglas Murray, <laughs> would you like to see the, van the veil banned here? Well, I think, like a majority of British people, I think that it should be banned in public places, particularly places like courtrooms, where it's absolutely imperative that a jury are able to ban? see the faces of uh, people who are accused. As for an overall ban, I think, look, I, I, my own opinion is that niqab is highly undesirable. I think that we live in a society where people do show their faces, where huge amounts of our social interaction depend on people showing their faces. I think that it's very difficult to enforce a ban in public places like streets, but it should be a, certainly a desirable so thing to discourage its wearing. to impose a ban, but in principle you'd like to see one because you think in Britain in, it's unacceptable. In public buildings, in courts, in schools and places like this, absolutely, I think a ban would be very sensible. In streets and so on, I think it's difficult, but it should be societally discouraged. Douglas Murray's stance on the ban of the niqab in public spaces in the UK, particularly in sensitive environments like courtrooms, is grounded in a broader argument about the fundamental requirements of a liberal and open society. A significant portion of human communication relies on facial expressions and visual cues, which are obscured when the niqab is worn. This impediment can hinder social interactions and, more critically, the basic operations of institutions that rely on facial recognition and expressions for identification and communication purposes. Douglas Murray's argument is supported by statistics and public opinion trends indicating a growing discomfort with the niqab in the UK. Surveys, such as those conducted by YouGov, have shown that a substantial majority of the British public supports restrictions on wearing the niqab in public spaces, especially in places where identification and open communication are essential, such as schools, airports, and courtrooms. This sentiment is not isolated to the UK. Similar attitudes can be observed across Europe, with countries like France, Belgium, and Denmark implementing various bans on full face veils. The Muslim activists' counter-argument that negative sentiments towards the niqab stem from a lack of education and interaction with Muslim women who wear it, while calling for more understanding, overlooks the practical implications of such garments in public and civic life. It's essential to differentiate between promoting cultural sensitivity and recognizing the operational necessities of a society's public and legal systems. Beyond practical reasons, the niqab's presence in public life raises deeper questions about the integration and visibility of women in society. Critics like A.I. and Hirsi Ali have voiced concerns that the niqab may symbolize the segregation of women from public life and the suppression of their individual identities. Such perspectives are crucial in the debate over how liberal societies should navigate the delicate balance between respecting cultural and religious practices 
and upholding the principles of equality and openness. Accommodate religious expression in this country. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses who don't want uh, blood transfusions, uh, Sikh people who want to wear turbans. We, we make exceptions, you know, in, in certain situations. And so, look, you know, I really want to reach out to the public and say, you've got nothing to fear from us. But take up I was born in this country. I love point. this country. Take up Yasmin's point. But this is about exceptionalism. The, 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 take up Yasmin Alibi Brown's point about this is about exceptionalism. It, 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 we, 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 make cannot... accom we accommodate, don't we, in this country, and uh, in my country, Britain, we accommodate uh, religious expression. We yes. do make exceptions yes. for people. And there's nothing, uh, and that's what I no, thought. And we cannot destroy up in this country, the minorities but, and the religious belief a... in the name of equality. <laughs> but we what have... if the majority feel uncomfortable? feel uneasy and say they don't want to. I think then the onus is on us as well, isn't it? I mean, to, to actually reach out. And I, I'm hoping that this is just going one step towards that, to say to people, look, you know, we're human beings just like but, you. But if I may, if I may, just, if, if I may very quickly. To hold that, the, the religious freedom is an extremely important thing. And I think most people who would agree, I hope in this yep. room, that Britain is the most tolerant place in the world to live, including as a Muslim. Yeah. Um, but let's just add one thing to this, if I may. The issue of social interaction is very important, and not just to me, but obviously to a majority of the British people. Yeah. What I say tonight, what Yasmin says and other people say tonight, people see our faces, they know who said it. I'm sorry to say this, but nobody knows who you are. They can hear your name, they can't see you. Compatible. If I say something stupid on television tonight, people know it's me saying it. If you do, with all due respect, you can disappear and no meaning. one knows. No, we're not disappearing. What does it say? Here, come the on. meaning of this thing is extremely important to, to address. The meaning of this thing is women are by nature dangerous to Not men and society. No, no, Therefore, no. they must be covered, they must be buried. That's the meaning of it. And that's what I cannot accept. Douglas Murray, aligning with Yasmin Alibhai Brown's commentary, emphasizes that the niqab symbolizes more than just a religious or cultural garment. It represents a deeper ideological stance on the role and visibility of women in society. The niqab reflects a view that women are inherently a source of temptation, necessitating their physical concealment from the public eye to maintain societal decorum. This perspective inherently contradicts the principles of gender equality and individual freedom championed in liberal societies. This critique resonates with broader feminist analyses of veiling practices. Scholars and activists argue that requiring women to cover their faces in public is a manifestation of patriarchal control over women's bodies and choices. Such practices, they assert, not only segregate women from the social and political life of their communities, but also reinforce the notion that women are primarily responsible for controlling men's sexual behavior, thereby perpetuating gender inequality. Statistics from various human rights organizations underscore the impact of such ideologies on women's rights and societal integration. For instance, reports from the United Nations have highlighted how dress codes enforced on religious or cultural grounds can impede women's access to services, employment, and education, limiting their opportunities for personal and economic development. The encouragement of niqab wearing in public settings not only hinders women's visibility and participation in public life, but also symbolically takes a step back in the hard-won advancements for women's rights. The niqab, in this view, is not just a personal or isolated choice, but a public statement with implications for how women's roles and rights are perceived and enacted in society. Wow. What a very heated debate. I think I kind of uh, relate with Douglas Murray's point of view. Why in a society where uh, a lot of communication have to be, you have to see the person's face uh, so you'll be able to uh, communicate to the person freely. But I understand, I also understand that uh, just uh, as a Muslim activist, you say, uh, the lady, uh, he's saying in this video that uh, they were, uh, that people should be able to reach out to them and they, will, they should be able to reach out to them that they are not dangerous to the, to the society. They are not dangerous to the society. And Jasmine was also saying in this video that uh, you wearing a makeup, covering yourself, people uh, cannot identify and know who you are. That is another way of saying women are dangerous uh, to the society. So they should be covered, and she's not going to. She's not going to accept that. And George Douglas Murray also uh, raised a point that uh, is uh, uh, the wearing of uh, the niqab is highly undesirable. 
that it should be discouraged in the streets and it should be banned uh, in, uh, in, in places like courts and schools. I also believe that, you know, uh, depending on the school, uh, even when you are uh, having a conversation with someone, looking at the person face to face and seeing the person's expression, you can tell if the if the uh, uh if the conversation is going where well, if the com uh, the conversation is going where well. so I believe looking at someone's expression sometimes can uh, uh can give you the idea of how to uh, uh engage in, in in dialogue with a person you know sometimes uh people might not be in the right frame of mind sometimes people might be might be angry might be moody or might feel sad and all that so. Looking at their facial expression, you can tell that uh, I sh uh, that uh, you can tell that this person is not uh, is not feeling well. This person is not happy. So you know how to engage uh, in dialogue with a person. And Douglas Murray also say uh, it should be bound in places like uh, places like courts and schools. And I even believe uh, in schools. When most especially uh, uh those in the basic level, when you have uh, a teacher uh, teaching in class, I believe uh, the teacher should uh, uh should be able to look at the student face to face, and she she will understand when the teacher look at the, uh, the student face to face, look at uh, the student expression. The teacher can really tell if the student is really uh, understanding what he or she is teaching. Because, you know, sometimes students can be, most especially those below the age of uh, fifth, uh, below the age of 15, uh, they, they can be, uh, sometimes they might not understand what uh, the teacher is teaching. But when the teacher is able to look at uh, their, their expression, the teacher can tell if they are following what he or she is teaching. And I believe uh, in this 21st century we are right now, uh, looking at uh, someone covering himself and dial uh, engaging in a dialogue with you is very difficult for you to uh, uh be able to tell what we 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 be able to tell if the conversation is going well. I believe that's uh what Douglas Murray is trying to uh, uh make them understand uh in this video. I also believe that uh they have their own rights. They have the, uh, the freedom of speech. They have the freedom to dress however, however they want. But I believe sometimes you should also consider other people's opinion. If you are doing something and you feel that uh, uh, people around you that they are, they are, they are frowning at uh, they are frowning at it, you should be able to uh, consider their own opinion. You should be able to consider their own feeling. But uh, I believe you shouldn't. Uh, you shouldn't uh, uh, make yourself uh, uncomfortable to please people. But sometimes you have to accommodate some. Uh, you have to accommodate certain things because we are in a society whereby there is exchange of ideas and people have to uh, 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 be be very social about a lot of things. So if you think you are, if you think people are not being comfortable around you, I believe uh, you should. Adjust, adjust, you should adjust yourself. I believe that's what uh, 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 the lady was also saying that uh, in the compound where she lived, I don't know, like, uh, in the compound where she lived, yeah, sometimes she have to remove the makeup. She have to remove the makeup because of the Uduma and the kid. That's another way of acknowledging that, uh, uh, that a lot of people are not comfortable with it. Because if they are comfortable with it, why why did uh she, she she didn't need to remove it? She she only did that because she she knew that uh the kid and, and the old or the old woman in question wasn't comfortable wasn't uh, comfortable to engage in conversation with her because of the way she's fully covered. Wow. I also I understand that uh they see it as uh a way that they see it they they, they believe wearing the niqab, uh, draw them closer to God. They have their own belief. I'm not against that. But I'm just saying that they should be able to accommodate uh, other people's opinion. Wow. 
I really learned a lot uh, listening listening to uh, this debate, uh, and I've also come to understand why Muslim ladies wear the cap, and I've also understand that sometimes a lot of communication. Though the lady made a point that uh, 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 people do communicate through Facebook, through Twitter, by not looking at each other face to face, I, I, I. I, I I understand uh, that point, but I also believe that a lot of conversation, it's, you have to look at the person's expression so you'll be able to tell how the, uh, uh, the, the, the dialogue is going. Wow. So I'd also like to hear your opinion. Keep the comments coming. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day.